originally my, my work started because we were looking to figure out, or we were challenged, I will say, with how we would reverse innovate ourselves as a technology company in healthcare. When we started to learn more about healthcare in the places where we worked outside of the US, we started to get an understanding that we were not suited at the time to provide better health for all people. In order to do that, we were going to need to rethink the way that we distributed, the way that we designed, the way that we trained products to work in these regions outside of the Americas. So what does healthcare look like in a place like Africa or in India? Uh, what about a, in Bangladesh where um, different needs are met. Uh, so we, we really targeted MDGs 4 and 5 and said that in order for us to be able to do our best, we could focus on maternal and infant care. And we started to rethink the products that we were going to put into the market. Engineering minds, we, we have tons of thoughts and ideas. One of my challenges when, when I first started thinking about reverse innovation was learning to think in terms of a simplified process and, and convincing myself that it didn't have to be the golden widget. You know, it just needed to be the widget that worked. And, and so, you know, I had to take a step back and say, but I like making golden widgets, you know? They look pretty and they're shiny and they do everything. But what's best for the region? What's going to be sustainable? What's going to be able to be used by a task-shifted user? What's going to be solar-powered? And so changing your thought process, reverse engineering your ideas, once you get that churning, then all of a sudden it's like you're standing in the middle of this great canvas and you're like, I have all these ideas. And, you know, the, I think the, the next challenge we face is that, you know, we have these ideas that keep us up at night and then we're not sure exactly where to go and what to do with them. This is where philanthropy can play a great part. The role of a philanthropist, um, the ability to influence and the, the ability to make change in the emerging markets, it's, it's so great uh, and so very different than what the government or even private sector companies can do. Uh, you know, someone that is leveraging their philanthropic dollars has the ability to target uh, where they'd like to see their research dollars or their product dollars go. They have the ability to really uh, push and influence change on a, on a governmental scale and to really tie to local designers on the ground to get the needle moving fast. The other challenge there though is that I don't always know that philanthropists know this. I think that they have uh, incredible hearts. They're giving of, of their own historical resources, but the, the impact that they're having can be greater if only they were more informed on some of the best efforts. We don't want philanthropists to be afraid of technology. We don't want them to be afraid of, of hardware and devices and products. You know, it's not just um, a program or, or training or, or writing uh, manuals or, or deploying people into the field to, to teach, those things are all critical and necessary. But sometimes it's what you have in your hand and what you're taking with you.